What's up everybody, this is Antonio here to bring you another episode in the series of how many shares of a certain company do you need to own to make $1,000 a month, $100 a month, and even $100 a week. Uh, so I have this list that you guys have been providing me over time. Let me know if there's a company you want me to cover, we'll add it to the list and eventually get to it. Uh, of course, that they do pay debt, pay out dividends. Uh, but uh, anyways, in this video, guys, we will be going over uh, CHMI, uh, which we'll pull it up on Seeking Alpha. Look up, look at the company, read a little bit about the company profile, look at the charts for a little bit, and then we'll look at the dividend summary. We'll pull up the calculator, crunch those numbers to see uh, what you need to own to make $1,000 a month, $100 a month, and then $100 a week. And then we'll wrap it up by looking at the uh, dividend yield, showing us if currently the best opportunity is right now to enter the stock or if uh, it was in the past. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, CHMI stands for uh, Cherry Hill Mortgage Investment Corporation. They're currently trading about $3.82. If we uh, pull up the company profile, we can read a little bit about them. So uh, Cherry Hill Mortgage Investment Corporation, a residential real estate finance company, acquires, invests in, and manages residential mortgage assets in the United States. The company operates through investments in RMBS, which is residential mortgage-backed securities, and uh, investment in uh, servicing related assets and all other segments it manages a portfolio of servicing uh, related assets and RMBS uh, Cherry Hill Mortgage Investment Corporation qualifies as a real estate investment trust for federal income tax purposes so that means that you will probably get taxed at a regular income rate because they would be considered a REIT the company generally would not be subject to federal uh, corporate income tax if it distributes at least 90% of its taxable income to its stock uh, stockholders. If we look at uh, the sector here, they are uh, financials, but the industry is mortgage REITs. Uh, employees, for some reason, it's showing only four employees and that they were founded in 2012. Uh, and then if you want to look at their uh, products or what they provide, you can visit them at this site here. But uh, if we look at the charts here, you'll look at the year to date. They are down about 35.25% on the one year, 41.77% on the five year. They are down 79.10% on the 10 year. They are actually, I guess it doesn't go far, that far back, but uh, total since they've uh, been publicly traded or they show up on charts, they are down 78.50%, which is a horrible return there, guys. If, imagine investing $100 in this company. Those $100 would now be worth about $21. Uh, you know, of course, not counting dividends. I'm not sure if they have cut their dividend. I would imagine they probably have, but uh, yeah, definitely not my type of investment. But we'll, if we look at the 52-week range here, you'll see that on the 52-week low, they are uh, is three point or I guess three dollars and seventy cents. They're actually way closer to that. 52-week uh, high has been seven dollars and twenty-four cents. Uh, EPS is 0.73, PE 5.23, dividend rate is 60 cents, yield is a 15.71%, and then the market cap is very small, 105.12 million market cap for this company. If we look at the dividend scorecard, we can look at the dividend summary. They are in the financial sector and considered a REIT here. Uh, dividend yield is a 15.71%. That's a very, very high dividend yield. You got to be concerned about that. See if it's even sustainable or not. And then on the annual payout, they pay out uh, 60 cents per share that you do uh, get annually. Uh, payout ratio is 110.34%. And then five-year Kager is actually in the negative by a double-digit negative number. 
and then no dividend growth here uh, they do pay out quarterly on the frequency which is about 15 cents every single quarter uh, definitely not my type of investment that i like to invest in again but uh, let's go ahead and pull up the calculator we'll go ahead and crunch these numbers so uh, we want to find out how much of this company would you have to own or be invested in to uh, make one thousand dollars a month so we want to multiply one thousand times twelve because there's twelve months in a year uh, so we need to make annually twelve thousand dollars if you take those twelve thousand dollars but divide it by the annual payout uh, which is 60 cents in our case this will give you the total number of shares you need to own which is twenty thousand shares of this company and you'd be roughly making about a thousand dollars a month but uh, if we convert that those 20,000 times the current share price, which is $3.82. Uh, this would give you about, uh, you'd have to have invested about $76,400. Uh, to actually generate about a thousand dollars of course assuming they don't cut their dividend because that's a huge dividend yield uh, and then if we quick way to calculate this is take the twelve thousand you need to make annually divided by the dividend yield which is the 15.71 percent one five seven one and then you'll see we roughly get about seventy six thousand so that's a quick way to calculate that let's go ahead and do the next one which is 100 every single month this was a little bit more achievable because you do require a lot less capital uh, and again you can also take the previous answer divided by uh, 10 and that will give you the answer but let's go ahead and uh, just go work through the math since i do have the calculator so we want to make 100 dollars every single month there's 12 months in a year so annually we need to make 1200 and then if you divide that by the annual payout which is a 60 cents that means that you have to own about 2,000 shares of this company and then if you multiply it times the $3.82 you have to have invested about $7,640 in this company if you're roughly collecting about $100 a, uh, a month uh, of course they do pay out quarterly so you would be getting paid about what 300 or so every month and or I guess every quarter and then you just obviously split that per month uh, at that point but a quick way to calculate this, take the 1,200 divided by the annual or the dividend yield, which is 1,571. Uh, and then you'll see we get roughly about $7,638 that you'd have to have invested in this company. Let's go ahead and do the next one, guys, which is the last one is $100 every single week. This one would be a lot nicer because every week you'd have $100 to spend. Uh, so we want to make $100 every single week. There's 52 weeks in a year. So you multiply, multiply that. So you need to make annually uh, $5,200. Uh, uh, take that $5,200 divided by the annual payout so that this gives you the total number of shares you need to own, which comes out to be about 8,666 shares. Then you can just multiply that times the current share price, uh, which is $3.82, which is roughly about, uh, you need to have about $33,106 invested in this company. And uh, you'd be roughly making the $100 a week. Uh, of course, you do require a lot less capital if uh, you're investing for the long term and reinvesting the dividends. Uh, and of course, if they don't pay, uh, cut their dividend. But in my case, I like to invest in blue chip companies, smaller dividend yield, smaller return in the in the short term. But uh, in the long term, they do five, have double digit five year kagers, which compounds very very nicely uh, we'll see that in a couple years when we see that compounding happening much faster but uh, anyways guys uh, let me uh, actually show you uh, if we show you a quick way to calculate this so again 5200 is we want to make uh, annually uh, divided by the dividend yield uh, which is uh, roughly giving you about thirty three thousand ninety nine dollars here but uh, yeah, this is the calculations, guys. Let's go ahead and jump over and wrap up the video by looking at the dividend yield. So if we look at the dividend yield, this is the actual yield. You'll see it fluctuate over time and uh, you'll see it goes all the way till about 2018. Uh, they had a dividend yield about 10 to 11 percent. And then in the March uh, crash, it did spike up all the way till about 50% or so and then it's been going down to about 9, 10, 12% and it's slowly been going to it was at 20 or so back in uh, June, Ju uh, May, June 
and then uh, I guess now it's been up to 25% on the dividend yield. Definitely not my type of company that I would invest in, guys. Let me know in the comment section if you would invest in this company or you invested in it and uh, why, you know. Uh, but anyways, don't forget to subscribe with that bell notification. Uh, don't forget to drop a big thumbs up on the video. Help me, uh, you know, support this channel. And uh, let me know any other companies you guys want me to cover in the future. I'll be happy to add those to the list, of course, if they pay out dividends only. Uh, I will talk to you guys later. Take care. Stay safe out there. Bye, guys.